10 years from now, you will surely become someone. Uh, the big question is who? What are you becoming? And if you go to work on it now, sure enough, in a very short period of time, you can take on a new direction to become the kind of person you want to be. There's a very important question to ask, and the question is 10 years from now, you will surely arrive. And the question is where? So to answer the question of where you want to arrive and the kind of person you want to be, you've got to get serious. What I would ask you to do starting today is get excited about committing an act, an act that's positive, an act that's constructive to make the changes in your life that you want made and to go the direction that you want to go. Get excited about your potential. Human capacity is usually never the problem. Little children can learn several languages, but we can learn to do the most incredible things. All we need to do is take the time to do it. So it's not a matter of capacity. It's a matter of judgment. It's a matter of excitement. It's a matter of will. And uh, it's a matter of wanting to bat enough. So it's pretty exciting to know that any day you wish you can change your life, any day you pick out, you can make major changes. It doesn't ever have to be the same again. And that's exciting, knowing that intellectually and personally, you can actually do the things that will make major changes in your life. There's so many things to work on on this that if you don't get busy and work on it, sure enough, the time will pass. And sure enough, five years from now, you'll wind up where you don't want to be wearing. What you don't want to wear, driving what you don't want to drive, being what you don't want to be. Now's the time to fix it. Now here's three. You've got to get going. All of the things that you've learned will not do you that much good if you don't put it into an action plan. You've got to get going. Uh, in my management leadership seminar, we teach game plans, how to put all the good things that you've learned into action, economic action, social action, personal action, how to make the changes and how to actually do the work, how to actually function, get going. That's the key. Some people are ever learning, but they don't put it into action and they don't really take the action. It's like the man who keeps bringing materials to the building site and never builds anything. He keeps bringing in the sand and the gravel and the windows and the doors and the roofing material, and he just stacks up all these supplies. But he never builds anything. See if you do that long enough, fairly soon. They'll come and take you away. You've got to do something with what you've learned. You've got to take action. You've got to get going. So that's one of the most important things to learn, how to design your days, how to design your weeks, and how to design the months so that you take the proper action to get the proper return that you're looking for. Whether it's economic or personal, get going. It's a major key. Now let me show you what triggers all emotions into activity that brings result. And results is the name of the game, here it is, action. Finally, you must do something about how you feel, Jesus, the master teacher said. Don't just be listeners, be doers. The world admires the doers, whatever it takes to get you to try harder. Read more, set your goals, and go for it. Uh, here's the next attitude, disease over caution. Some people never will have much. They're too cautious. Now, you can also be too reckless, but you can also be too cautious. This is called the timid approach to life, and my caution was always the risk. Risk used to drive me right up the wall. You know, I used to say, what if this happens? Like, it's called the language of the poor. What if this happens, and on top of that, if this was to happen, look at the fix I'd be in. I better not try. I could always ace myself out. Then I'll tell you what changed my whole life when I finally discovered it's all risky. The minute you were born, it got risky. Uh, if you think trying is risky, wait till they hand you the bill for not trying. If you think investing is risky, wait till you get the tab for not investing. See, it's all risky. Getting married is risky. Having children is risky. Going into business is risky, and all investing your money is risky. It's all risky. I'll tell you how risky life is. You're not going to get out alive. That's risky. The Englishman says, well, if that's the way it's going to work out, let's give it a go, right? That's what it's for. Give it a go. Somebody says, yeah, but I'm looking for safety and security. Uh, and then huddle in a corner. We'll cover you with a sheet, bring you three meals a day, and we'll protect you, feed you, look after you, care for you. We won't let anything happen to you, and you'll probably live to be 100. Yeah, I said, well, yeah, I'd live to be 100, but what a way to live a live, right? What a way to live safe and secure. Don't ask for security, ask for adventure. Better to live 30 years full of adventure than 100 years safe in the corner and see it's not important how long you live. What's important is how you live. Here's the next attitude, disease. Uh, we're almost through with this motley list. In fact, we're almost through. Hang on. 
The next one is pessimism. Pessimism, the deadly disease of always looking on. The bad side, the problem side, the difficult side, checking all the reasons why it can't be done. The poor pessimist leads an ugly life. He doesn't try to figure out what's right. He tries to figure out what's wrong. He doesn't look for virtue. He looks for faults. And uh, when he finds him, he's delighted how ugly this is. A poor guy looks through the window, doesn't see the sunset. He sees the specks on the wind. And this is the poor guy, right, who rushes up, takes such leave of his senses. This guy rushes up and he says, I've got five good reasons why it won't work. He's so dumb he doesn't know. All you needed is one, he's got five. To the pessimist, the glass is always half empty. To the optimist, the glass is half full. Why would the same measure affect people two different ways? The answer, it all depends on how you look at it. Our lives are mostly affected by the way we think things are, not the way they are. The way we think there affects us most. There's a subject we don't have time to get into tonight called better thinking habits. Well, one of the major things Shove taught me when I met him. He said, poor thinking habits keeps most people poor, not poor working habits. Most people work hard, but they don't think hard. And Shove taught me that the mind is like a factory, a, a mental factory. And whatever you think about all day long pours ingredients into this mental factory. And that's what builds the economic, social, financial fabric of your life. He quoted me a Bible phrase that says, as you think so, you become how awesome. When he talked about poor thinking habits, he had me. I used to start the day reading the morning newspaper. I mean, you can believe that or not, I'd get a cup of coffee and read the paper, I'd load up on wars and riots and murders and stabbings and killings and bank robberies and muggings and car wrecks and tragedies. I'd even read the back pages. I uh, seemed to like that stuff for some weird reason. I'd load up on all that and then I'd start the day. You can imagine the kind of days I used to have. You walk around on your financial knees, they call you economic peewee. The guy says, I want to be a great leader. Wonderful. The first thing we do is follow him to his house. Uh, when we get there, we walk in and check his library. One somebody says, well, why check his library? The reason is because what a man reads pours massive ingredients into his mental factory and the fabric of his life is built from those ingredients. You would not believe what some people have got in their house to read. Uh, you would not believe uh, one of the best dressed up words I know for a lot of it is trash. Can you imagine dumping a barrel of trash into this mental factory every day and coming out with a rich, dynamic, positive life? It can't be done. I might as well try making a cake with cement. The kids back in Danbury, CT High School, they're asking me questions one day. I'm talking to the kids. Kids got good questions these days. One of them said to me, Mr. Owen, how do you build the good life? I said, it's simple. It's not easy, but it's simple. Here's how you build anything, select the right ingredients. Keep out the wrong ingredients. And uh, it starts with thought. Everything starts with thought. So you must be wise and careful what you think about because that starts everything. You gotta be wise and careful. I asked kids what would happen if somebody dropped sugar in my coffee. They said, well, you'd be okay. I said, what if somebody dropped strychnine in my coffee? They said, well, you'd be dead. I said, correct, lesson one, life is both sugar and strychnine. You've gotta be careful. I said, what if my worst enemy drops in the sugar? They said, will you be okay? I said, what if my best friend, even by accident, drops in the strychnine? They said, well, you'd be dead. I said, correct. Lesson two, watch your coffee. You gotta be careful. See, it doesn't matter who hands you the bad stuff, it doesn't matter where you get the bad stuff. It'll still do its damage on your bank account, uh, wherever you get it. Mr. Shoff gave me one of the greatest phrases when I first met him when he said, Jim, every day stand guard at the door of your mind. How important. Stand guard at the door of your mind and you decide what goes into your mental factory. Don't let anybody just dump anything they want to in your mental factory because you've got to live with the results. Okay, here's the last disease and we're through with this list. In fact, we're almost through. Hang on. The last subject is very brief, the last disease. Uh, but this one is deadly. Engage in this one, indulge in it even slightly, and you might as well forget the future because it's going to forget you. Complaining, crying, trying, griping. A Bible word called murmuring. See, that'll ace your future. And five minutes complaining and you have wasted five, and you may have begun what's known as economic cancer of the bone. Sure, they will soon haul you off into a financial desert, and they'll let you choke on the dust of your own.